Today I am thrilled to be bringing you some brand new DIY fall decor. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a wood leaf makeover. So if you are very into everything being white and farmhouse, but maybe you want to change your look up a little bit, think about some of the decor you already have in your house. So this is a piece that I thrifted. It was whitewashed and I am just going to use my sander and get as much of this stuff off as I can. And I did want to show you that you can do this by hand with a little sanding block if you want to. Be sure that you wipe in between. I think this is like a, it has a chalky residue. So I think somebody whitewashed it with some chalk paint. And um, possibly if I would have gotten this wet, this might have come off because I do not believe it was waxed went ahead and just look at the beautiful grain of the wood under oh I've got to show that it was all covered up by the the pickling or the whitewash look at the look at the filth just look at it it's everywhere so it's very easy to clean up though and really it's easy to it's just messy so after I get all that off I am going to do the backside as well and then take a clean cloth and wipe off the dust then I'll spritz it with a little bit of some you know, you could do like an alcohol mixture or part water, part alcohol, so that it will evaporate fast for you. And I'm just going to clean this up. Any of the rest of the residue that needs to come off, I'm going to get it all off here. So I wipe it first with a soft, lint-free cloth that was dry. And now I'm going back over it with a damp one. Otherwise, it's just going to get muddy and you'll be forever trying to clean it off. All right, I'm going to go back over it again. And this time I have got another cloth and I'm using just a piece of, this is almost like a fleece, like a fleece or felt stretchy kind of stuff. And I've just torn it to pieces. You can see how it's still got some stuff in it. Not a problem if you don't mind it, but you can definitely um, sand that off with a little sander if you want to get any excess off. At first when I was doing this, I wasn't entirely sure that it was real wood. I thought maybe it was like a, a panel or something over the top of some MDF, but it is uh, truly, um, you know, boards glued together. I could see that when I did the edges of it, I could see that it was um, all the way through. There was no paper coming off, and when I'm sanding this as well, the paper would come off, and it, there's no paper here, so I'm just using this sort of as an eraser. To get off any of those marks that were a little bit deeper. Now if I would have used a hand sander in this, I could have gotten all of that off. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can do it by hand because not everybody has tools, right? So we want to make this where everybody can do it. So this is just a stick that I've used to put down my furniture repair marker colors so that I can easily match the, the wood up with the finish that I want. And so we're going to go with oak here. And there are some white divots, like little um, dents or scratch marks in here. And then around the edges, it's kind of chipped too. I got this at the Goodwill bins. And if you know anything about the Goodwill bins, everything is dumped into a big blue table and you just dig through it. So lots of things are broken. They have dents in them. They have um, deep scratches. The paint's wearing off. But you know, if you like doing flips like I do, this is perfect. Nobody else wanted this. But I saw something that we could do with it, and I want you to start thinking like that, too. So I'm just going to put the little dots of the, the repair um, coloring on there, and then I'll go back over and sand off everything that's not inside the hole. So what's in the hole won't come off because it's down lower than the, the sanding block or the emery board that you're using. So I'm just going to go over the top so I don't remove anything I just put down. And then again, same process. You just clean it up. Wipe it off. Clean it up. I had to get my shop back out and get all the dust off my table because I was transferring it back to my clean item. So, y'all, the, the, I don't even know. If you know anything about wood, you can tell me what these wood types are in here. Um, they're beautiful. And you can see when they're wet, they look so much richer than they do when they're dry. That's a good way to tell if it's done or not. Um, if it's lighter, then it's, you can tell that the, it's dried all the way because it's going to be a little darker when it's wet. But you can see how the boards are raised up and put together. Now I'm going to go around this. It's also kind of, um, the paint is either worn off or, 
I, I don't know, but it's not a good even finish all the way around. And considering that I wanted this to be more rustic and woody-like, I want to go ahead and grab my uh, antiquing wax. And I'm just going to go with the grain. This is almost like, you can see the little stripes here. It's really weird. But I'm going to go in there and put this on pretty thickly and then give it a chance to dry. Read the instructions on your bottles depending on what kind you're using. Let it dry and then wipe back whatever you don't need. Now, a little bit's going to get on the front side and the back side of your board, most likely, if you do this. Just blend it out while it's still wet. Just quickly blend it out and it's going to give you a little more shadowing. And I intend to put a shadow on this board anyway, you know, to give it a little more detail. I am not going to be using this for food, so I'm going to just use a clear wax on here. If you wanted to use it as a charcuterie board, you would want to be sure that you use all um, like a wood conditioner that is okay and food safe. I do make my own wood conditioner for charcuterie boards, and I will link the video where I show you how to make that. If you're interested, it is all natural and completely food safe, and it is really good for your wood. Plus, if you like bees, there's a little hint to you. Yep, the bees help me make my conditioner. Look how beautiful and rich this looks when you apply the wax. Gorgeous. And if I would have wanted this darker, I could have went with the antiquing wax and just did that on here. If you rub with the grain, it's going to soak in a little bit better. And then you can also do little circles, you know, to really condition it, really rub it in. Think of when you put lotion on your skin and you just really rub it in. That's what you want to do here. Now this is me just wiping back some of that antiquing wax because I just want it to look old and a little crusty. And you can see when it's wiped back, definitely it's still got those, it's got darker spots, lighter spots. That looks grubby and it's beautiful. So once you put on wax, you need to let it dry. I think it was like 24 hours that you're supposed to let it dry and then go back in with a clean dry cloth, <laughs> lint free again and then uh, kind of rub that wax so that it blends out um, really evenly for you. And it will get rid of any milky, milky look and it will be, um, have a nice little soft sheen to it. Now I'm just taking a little chippy brush in that antiquing wax and gonna go ahead and work with that where it kind of overflowed on my sides. I'm just gonna go with that because it's gonna give it more dimension, you see, automatically when you watch me do this in a faster speed you see that it gives more dimension on the sides and I really like that. If you do this while the wax is still wet, the clear wax, you can kind of blend this out together if you want to do it that way. But it does blend in very well. It's just a beautiful piece and I could have made it a charcuterie board, but I want to use this as decor. So I'm going to just use my Waverly wax and then I'll show you another project in this video where we use a uh, food safe wax just in case you're interested. And uh, yeah, very pretty. If you want to give it as a gift, you can tie a bow on it and give it as a gift. You can drill a hole and make it something that can be hung um, with a leather piece of leather strap. Maybe that would also be pretty or make it food safe if you want to and use it during the holidays. I hope y'all ready for fall, y'all. The next project is going to be a charger wreath. I'm gonna grab up some flowers and I just have a variety because I'm not really sure what I wanna use yet, but I do want it in a fall color. We're gonna use a pipe cleaner. I'm gonna use some of this eucalyptus that is green turning into a nice bronzy color there or orangey color. Scraps from last year, I'm gonna use these. These come originally from a pick that was donated to me. And then we have some raffia and you can also use excelsior, whatever type of a woody like, um, strawy like grass is what I was going for here. And you can see this is the info. I did get it thrifted and it was all nicely in this little Ziploc bag for me. Here's a gorgeous wood charger. I have done wreaths on chargers before, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who has done a wreath on a charger before, but this is just my little spin on it. This is how I like it. I'm going to take just a wad of that and kind of pinch it in the middle, as big or as wide as I want it to be, 
to make a little bunch to put on the side because this is going to be underneath where we're going to put our greenery and stuff. You're not going to see a whole lot of this, but you will see it poking out and it just gives it a nice little, another little bit of texture that I think really looks good and especially in fall projects. So looking like you got some hay or you got some, you know, grasses and greenery that are changing color at the end of the season and then harvest. I think this looks really pretty and I think it looks very similar the color of it to the color of the silks and the greens that come off of corn. So definitely harvesty. Then I'm just going to cut into this because I'm going to cut the loops off. We left it looped up just to make it easier to put it down and then I am just going to start hacking into it. I'm going to cut the loops off the bottom. I added a little bit extra to make it a little thicker down there. And then I'll give it a little bit of a haircut. Then I'm going to take those pieces of greenery and just cut them down to where they're a manageable length. There's no sense having that stem so long that I have to weave it all the way through that charger to get it to sit down. That's just, it's just easier to do it right. So you can use any color greenery that you like and you can use any charger that you like, but the fact that this is a basket charger just screams rustic fall to me. It really does. And I didn't find a whole set. I got these thrifting and I only got three of them, but I'm thinking I'm going to definitely be using one for Christmas and then I'll have to think about, may even do another something with it for fall. We'll have to see. I'm really enjoying the dark rich woods though. All right, so I'm going to take this beautiful flower and I am going to sort of bend and weaken that just a little bit, the stem that's behind it, because I want a piece of that stem on there. It's going to help me hook it into the little swag arrangement that we have going on in the side. And then a little hot glue will really hold it in place. So it's going to go through where the raffia is and the knot that I made with that pipe cleaner. So it is really locked in there. I have chosen not to add any glue, but if you're going to put this outside, you need to be sure that you have firmly attached your pieces down, and especially if you're going to sell it or give it as a gift, you need to really make sure that you go that extra mile for the people who spend their time at your booth or, you know, with you, and you give them a gift, whichever way. Just make it your best, right? Make it your own, make it your best. And if you don't like a more muted color like this, then go ahead and grab the bright stuff. Generally, I like a lot of color in the fall, so you're going to see more of that sort of thing for me, that kind of traditional look. But I also like rustic and cottagey, so we'll see what we come up with here. So I hope y'all are subscribed and that you stick around. Isn't that cute? I gotta say cute because somebody suggested that every time I say the word cute, um or nice that they're going to take a shot that is funny y'all and i don't want to make anybody sick with alcohol poisoning so please don't play that game <laughs> don't play it okay so now if we're not going to put anything else in here in this arrangement i'm just going to cut those off those ends off then i'm going to take a flower stem that i trimmed down and show you how to make a hanger for the back so i'm going to fold it in half like a horseshoe and I'm going to fold up, I've just got some jewelry pliers here that, that I can twist the ends. I'm going to fold it up so both little sides have a hook and they're evenly spaced. See this? Very easy. It's using something you already have on hand. I'm going to slip it through one of those pieces of vine, bend it up. I'm going to add some hot glue where it is wrapped around that piece. And then I'll just take a piece of rope or ribbon or something else to put right on top to make sure that it's all locked in there together and nothing slips free. That'll be the hook for the back. Now, if you like this look, you could leave it like this. At this point, I like to make sure that I have as much greenery as I want. I'm looking at it from all directions, fluffing everything out, touching every little bit of it to make sure that, you know, it's everything's been done with intention. I'm making sure I don't have any weird angles on my raffia. And then making sure that I have the right kind of balance. If a balanced swag wreath or whatever is what you're looking for. So I wanted to make it, it was a little more heavy on the bottom. And I'm going to make it a little bit 
more substantial on the top just by adding a longer pick to extend that color up just a bit. Well, you can see what I'm doing here. If it bothers you when your leaves flip over, a little hot glue will fix them into place. Now look at this little cutie that I thrifted last year. Put him right here like he is peeking out of a pile of leaves. How cute. Now I'm just gonna use this another piece of that raffia. I'm gonna thread it through the back. This open weave makes it perfect to add things to, just so easy. And I'm gonna go back down around his head. And this is gonna be how we hold him on here. But you know, as I get it tied and I look at him, I'm feeling really bad about the fact that I have tied him on around his neck. It looks like I've wished him harm, and I have not. So after we get this tied, and you can add a dot of glue so it doesn't slip, I'm looking at it going, eh, looks, yeah, looks a little scary. So let's just go ahead and make him a little more fancy, like that is supposed to be on him, like he's got a bow tie or something. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to work with it. It's already down there. I'm going to twist this around a few of my fingers. You can do this with... Uh, if you want to use something like jute, you could use jute if you don't have raffia to use. But I'm just going to tie this one little piece around the center of it. It's loopy here. Tie it around the center. Pretty much doing what we did with the bigger section that we already put down. We're going to cut off loops so it's going to flare out. And I'm going to cut my ends off so that the ends are now going to be part of that bow. Just going to trim it. You can see I'm measuring it down and then do the same thing here. Then all I have to do is just fluff it out a little bit and it looks very intentional and it looks like it belongs on this little squirrel. And you find these little things all the time at, you know, different dollar stores and at, at the craft stores. So you could probably find one. And I think Hobby Lobby is 40% off their fall. I know I've seen a couple of people who do um, shop with me's. So some, some of them already have 40% off. So you just have to look and see which one, um, if it applies to yours. Now we're going to do a decoupage cutting board. All right. So I'm going to grab my sheepskin chalk paint. Loving this color. I'm going to grab a paintbrush. I'm also going to use Elmer's School Glue. I'm going to use Dollar Tree napkins from last year. This is a little ornament that I cannot remember where it came from. I've had it for many years and craft with it in many different ways. And then this was originally a Target Dollar Spot item that I bought at Dirt Cheap. Okay, so I'm gonna use I'm going to do this two different ways. I'm going to use a glue stick on the regular wood side because I'm going to show you why I paint first. I feel like without an example, you don't really understand maybe what I'm getting at. So let me just show you. And then we'll end up with a board that has both sides done. A little bit of glue. And then carefully, I'm just going to pat down. I'm trying to go from the center outward and downward so that the, if there are wrinkles or bubbles, they will push out. Now you have to be careful because this is one ply of tissue. I've already taken it apart or paper towels, one ply, and it's fragile. So you gotta be very careful. Now you can cut your edges or you can use a sander block or a, uh, a emery board, or if you're careful with your fingers, you can just press it away on the edges. And then you can go back and make your nice crisp lines with your sander. I always try to make it as easy to work with as I can. So I'm gonna cut off all the extra stuff so it's not all over the table and you know, making a big mess. I'm gonna make the work as easy as I can for myself. And this is a very satisfying part too. I love it when the paper just shears off. Okay, so now you know what I'm talking about. You see how you see the brown through there and it looks kind of mottled. If you like that look, that is, perfectly okay. But if you don't, I'll show you the other way to do it. So now this is kind of stamped into this wood. It is wood, but it's stamped in there. So what I'm trying to do is make it a little more flat so that it is not as noticeable once we get some paint on it. I am using chalk paint, so that does help us a little bit. And I will be using 
two good coats, letting it dry thoroughly in between. When you paint like this, if you don't want your sides to get paint on them, it seems for me to work best like this. I'll just turn my brush sideways and just push it to the edge and I don't have to worry about a bunch of runs down the side. So this is one coat. This is why we're going to need two. After it's done, I'm going to take a big brush and my Mod Podge. This is matte. And I'm going to show you what this side will look like with the paint under it. We're going to use Mod Podge. And we use the glue stick on the other side. I'm going to make a nice even coat. This is not going to be a very thick coat because what did I say before? Remember, it's going to get really soft and it's going to get really fragile. So you see how fragile this is. This is like one of those makeup spatulas that I bought to use with my crafting to help hold things down before I had my finger protectors. And it works good and I still use it on some projects. You just don't always see it. So I'm going to just work out from the middle downward. I'm going to put a little bit of the paper on at a time so I don't lock in any mistakes. Makes sense, right? I'm going to go around here and cut this off too, but not completely down. And we don't want to cut off too much. And then I'll just start shearing this off. Now you can see in my situation, I didn't wait for this to dry completely. And you can see the glue on the side. That's the only reason you can see that. Otherwise, it would be transparent. Now you see the difference. Look how rich the colors look against the lighter colored background. I love it. And now we're going to add a leaf to the top. I'm just going to add a piece of jute and I keep my scraps off of other projects and put them all together. And I will feed this right through it and then right through the little handle that happens to be up here. Now, if you get a cutting board, say at Dollar Tree, it doesn't have handle, it's pretty much just a rectangle. You can just hot glue it down if you want to, or you could even drill in and make your own handles for the top. I'm gonna make a little bow. I had just pulled off the bow that was on there before and added that to the scrap pile. Uh, if you noticed that when I first showed it, might have had that bow on it. I don't know if I cut that out or not, but now that I do have it on here, I'm going to trim off my tails at the right length. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to keep it from going oh, topsy-turvy on me. I want that bow to stay like it should, and sometimes they'll, they'll try to pull. And then this is what it's going to look. You see the difference? This is why I say paint under first. Look at the difference. It really makes that color pop. The next project is going to be a woven wood pumpkin. I'm going to be using my staple gun and some ribbon. And then this little thrifted pumpkin. I'm going to take off what they had on it. And hey, I like it like it is, right? But it is very farmhouse and I got to have color. I wanted to give you some options too on what you could do to make yours a little different than how everybody else makes theirs. So maybe everybody else does paint them, but has anybody ever done a ribbon braid on them? Maybe, but I want to show you how, just in case you've never seen it. Now I'm going to be cutting this off. I'm not even measuring it because you are going to go according to the size of your piece of wood block, right? You're going to go by that. I know I'm going to need three pieces to cover the front. So I'm going to measure one piece just sort of against the pumpkin and then I'm going to cut the other two pieces the same. We're going to go up and down with these ribbons first and then I am going to go side to side. Now the one that goes into the middle is, needs to be split on one part, right, so that it can go around the stem. So I'm going to cut somewhat near the middle of this ribbon and the fact that it's plaid makes it a little easier. I can follow the lines and then overlap on the back so that it holds it in place. You can see I'm just putting one over the other. It'll hold tightly against that stem and then I'm going to use my staple gun. Now, if you don't have a staple gun, you can hot glue. It's just going to take a little bit longer and it's going to take longer before you can actually pull on these to start doing the weaving part. So just be sure that you uh, keep that in mind. So here are the three. I don't want anything any closer than that. I like that it has the little gaps there. And then we're going to go across the other direction. I'm going to measure by just putting it across the back, looking to see, you know, how big I want it to be. And I can actually make the back a little neater if I overlap all of these on the back. So that's what I'm going to do. 
but make the process your own and choose whatever way that you like to do it, obviously, you know. We want to do things budget friendly and make it our own, right? Because making it your own does make it different, but it makes it special. You know, different is special. It's different is not bad. It's what brings you the joy that makes the difference, right? Okay, so I'm going to just put this in. You saw what I did, very easy. I'm gonna go under, over, and under. Wrap it around the back. Make sure that this is tight and where I want it to be, and then a staple in the back to hold it in place. The next time we'll go over, under, and over. Now I'm gonna butt them right up next to each other. And then we're gonna pull the ribbon. I'm not gonna say tight because you don't wanna mess anything up, but you know where there's no slack in it. And then you'll go to the next one. Now you can do this on a bigger scale and you'll have more of a weave. You know, you'll have more surface to weave. It's totally up to you how you wanna do it though. Then once we get to the end, I'm glad to see that they all fit on here. Snug, very snugly, but they fit. And I'm just going to staple that down. You can trim off any extra in the back and staple anything that you need to staple extra. And I'm just cutting off a little, little fray I had there. And you can see how this looks. If you wanna leave it that way, you can leave it just like that. You could also add some leaves to it, whatever color you like that's complimentary or contrasting. But I am gonna show you how you can do just a little bit more and we're going to use a window cling. Now, these are some that my sister gave to me and she got these at Dollar General. So they're only a dollar, not a dollar 25 like at Dollar Tree. So let's not forget that you can shop at Dollar General, Family Dollar, and often find things at a really good price too. All right, so I wanna go all the way through that blue and up to where it is white. I don't want any of that blue showing because we have nothing blue in our project. I love this and that background reminds me of a sweater. So I am using this on top of it. Yes, it's gonna cover up a lot of that weave and that is if you don't want your weave covered up, just leave it blank in the front. But I thought this would make it a little fun. And we're gonna add a little bow to it. Really easy bow. You've seen me do this many times. Use whatever kind of bow you want. A messy bow would have been really cute on here too. I know that it's gonna be this size. So I'm just going to grab a little scrap of jute and I'm gonna tie it around the back. And I like to do double or triple knots just to be on the safe side because I can be kind of rough when I am fluffing out bows. This one won't need a huge amount of fluffing but still gonna need a little fluffing. We have to fluff it. So now I'm just going to dovetail the ends. You just cut them upward. But you can cut them at a slant, whatever you way that you like it. And then you can tie it around your stem. Are y'all excited that pretty soon it's going to be all fall everywhere? I am very excited. I have yet to go to Hobby Lobby, but I see that Hobby Lobby in some areas have all their fallout. And it's already 40%. I'm also seeing that Joanne has a bunch of things out already. At Home has had a bunch of Halloween out already. So it's time to hit the roads and do a little window shopping. It's a really good way to find inspiration also if you're looking for maybe you're feeling a little burned out, you don't know where to start. Go look at something that you'd like but you refuse to pay the price for and then figure out how to do it yourself. I love doing that. Okay, now just to keep those from flopping around in the way of the sweater, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of hot glue to hold it in place. And then look, if you have wrinkles, all you have to do is take your heating tool or your blow dryer and just kind of blow over it. You want to kind of keep it moving a little bit. You don't want to melt your plastic. But look at that. Pressed it straight out. Of course, when leaves fall to the ground, they're usually wrinkled and kind of messy too. So you can definitely leave it just like you get them on the branch if you would like to do that. Now, I just decided to go ahead and cut them off where they were doubles. I cut them off, and I'm going to try to figure out how I want to swag this down. And I want it to be on this side. So I'm just going to keep it in that same shape and add a little bit of hot glue in between each layer so that nothing falls out. And then I'll take that up there to the top, tuck it a little bit behind that bow, and fluff that little bow out. So you could leave it like this as well. You don't have to add anything. I really wanted to add some of that beautiful burgundy color 
So I'm going to add a little more green and then I'm gonna add a little burgundy just to bring in some of the color that's in that sweater. And these I found at uh, Dollar Tree last year. That in fact, there was a lot of different colors of eucalyptus at Dollar Tree last year. And I am hoping that I can find more because it's really pretty. All right, so where you need to cut them down, cut them down. If you wanna leave them long, you can leave them long. I like a variety and a little bit of a difference in the heights instead of everything being even. I'm gonna have, of course, one hanging off the side. And then one that's been cut, I'll just add right up here by the bow. And then give that time to dry and it's gonna just stand up on its own. It won't, you don't need any type of a stand or anything to go with it. Y'all come and check out craftycruisegetaway.com and come cruise and craft with us. Information will be in the description box. The next is a wood vase redo or makeover. Okay, so you see this orangey color here. I'm not digging the orangey glossy color. This is a full wood piece. It looked like somebody turned it themselves. I have had this for quite some time and I did get this while I was out thrifting. There are some cracks in here. There are some deep scratches and marks in here. I am going to start by attempting to get some of this, whatever this varnish stain or whatever, off of it. And I am using a, I think this is a 60 grit sandpaper that I have. Now at this moment, I have a sander, but it's a flat sander. So we're gonna give it a try with that flat sander and see what I can do with it. Now when using this, I'm trying to keep my vase rolling back and forth so I don't end up with any deep areas. I want it to be rounded. I want it to continue to keep that same form and I have to do that by rolling it back and forth. Okay, so once you have sanded it down quite some bit, and my husband did go get one with a point, so I was really able to do a much better job that time, and I used a 80 grit to get this look. And you can see that it still has that reddish color in there. I don't know what, te what technique that was, I don't know. But I'm gonna grab the P120 now and go over it to make it nice and smooth. So I did, and now I'm making sure that I have that cloth has barely any liquid, like a spritz of water on it, just to get all the dust off. And I have wiped it several times to get it nice and clean. And I'm just gonna leave it and just work with this color that's on here. I do want this to be brown, but I don't want it to be the tint, color, and look of the vase the way it was before. I just don't, I don't care for that personally in my decor. So, now, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to use a Harvest Brown, add some water to it, and we're going to make our own stain. This is not a new idea. People do this all the time. All the time. I'm going to add water. I'm going to mix it. But you see how much red has already come out in, the, in that paint? I was hoping for something a little more neutral, but that's okay because the way I do this, it's going to come back off. This is gonna make, I'm almost doing like a wash over this. I'm working as quickly as I can. And this part is not sped up. As quickly as I can to slap some on there and then grab a rag and wipe it off. If you don't, you're going to have areas that have soaked in more and areas that are a little more faded looking. Of course, if that's the look you're going for, then you just do just that. Now, I didn't want to use a solid paint. I want to see the wood grain through here. It was a problem seeing it before, the way it was painted. It was just distracting because there was damage and everything. So I really want this to be something that is pretty and something that I can use in my fall decor. Because remember, you don't just get little tchotchke for fall, right? If you really love fall and you really love having seasonal decor in your home, you've got to have these workhorses or these pieces that you can use to do your, you know, if you wanna do some florals and change out some florals, well, you have to have these kinds of things. So rather than buying them, we're gonna flip our own. Okay, so once it's been applied and I have wiped it all off and my hands look awful, like I've been digging in raw clay, 
we're going to start adding a little more aging to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of black, mix it in there. This is going to make it very dark brown. I'm going to add a little more water in here, and then I'm going to put it back into the little spray bottle. I have some of these spray bottles. You can get stuff like this in the uh, Dollar Tree over where they have their, uh, let's see, maybe the stuff that you take on an airplane, you know, stuff like that. So if you have maybe those alcohol dyes, you could probably do something here with that. I am just gonna spray it on quickly and then rub this in. This is gonna give it some dark areas. It's gonna give it some areas that look aged, but you have got to move quickly on this and cover your surface. I didn't cover my table and it was kind of yucky to clean up until I got out the, what is that, Mr. Clean thingy, the little eraser, and then I was able to get it off very, very easily. So I'm just going to add this a little at a time around the mouth, the bottom, the high parts, you know, just wherever to kind of make it look a little bit older and give it a little more of a streaky look, I guess. I just want it to be aged or antique looking. So when it dries, this is how it's going to look. Not very pretty, right? Not very pretty. we got more work to do. I'm going to grab some wax. This is our antiquing wax, and I'm going to go right around the neck of this vase right around in there. I don't have a ton of paint and I'm going to kind of blend it up toward the mouth and then down over the rounded part of the vase. This is the area that would normally collect dust and be a little dirty anyway. It's going to give it definitely more dimension and curve. It really kind of shows off that curve. And I'll go all the way up to the lip, and then I'll also go on the inside. I'm just using circle, circular um, emotion around in here, just circular. And then the idea would be to go with the grain of the wood to bring out the grain of the wood, but to make it look a little more old, I'm just kind of going across it with this antiquing wax side to side first, and then blending it in with a dry cloth. And then I can start going down. I can start going with the grain of the wood. And you will see that those bits will stick to the ridges in that wood and the loops in that wood and all those beautiful circular patterns. If you get a little too much wax in any one area, go ahead and grab your little sand and tool, sand a little bit, and then go back over it. That's all you got to do. And you see how this is really starting to look old and antique? This is exactly what I wanted for this beautiful vase. Now I'm gonna make some dark areas. I'm gonna just go in there and just kind of push down a little bit. I got my fingers on the bristles and I'm kind of like pushing down into it to make some darker spots. And you can see how it's gonna look with just that wax on it. Very pretty already, I'm very happy with it. But now we're gonna use my wood conditioner and I will link the video up here for you so you can see how to make your own. It was not hard to do. This is what I use on charcuterie boards and you would use these on your cutting boards too. So I'm just gonna take a little scrap of fabric that I have because I don't get rid of anything. <laughs> and once I've given that darker wax a little time to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my wood conditioner. And now this bottle, since I have used it for decorative purposes, this particular jar will only be for decorative pieces, uh, conditioning decorative pieces, because I've dipped, I've dipped into the Waverly wax and then dipped back down into the wax that is supposed to be food safe, rendering it no longer food safe. So you get the point. And you can see the difference on the wood with and without that conditioner. Beautiful. So I'm gonna continue along and just really go over this, like I said with the other piece, you know, really blend it in there, massage that down into your surfaces. This, I don't know if it is waterproof or not, but I'm not gonna be using it with water in it, so that won't be a concern. And I just absolutely love the way that this vase is starting to look. It is definitely the look that I was going for in my home. Definitely. 
And if you can't find a wood piece for this, you know, kind of fake it. Just fake it with something that you have that may be plastic, you know, an old jug that you may have. What about an old pitcher that you're not using to drink from anymore? You can definitely do some type of a wood looking method on that if you would like. Yes. Now it is exactly how I envisioned it and I'm going to show you how it will look when you get it fixed up. You want to put your decor in it. I've just grabbed some pieces that are thrifted pieces that I've had for a little while. I'm going to trim up what I need to trim. I'll grab some daisies from Dollar Tree and I'll add those. They're, out, they're actually Black Eyed Susans, I think. And I'll just add those to show you how we do it. Very simple. Nothing, nothing fancy and no, no foam or anything in this project. You just poke them down in there. Very pretty. Here is that cute little sweater weather woven pumpkin. The beautiful board. Looks like it needs one more little coat of wax buffed out. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and give me a like if you enjoy the content. Be sure that you click that little bell so you will know when anything new comes out of the channel or when I have anything to announce to you. That will take you to my community page and we will find all kinds of good information over there. But only if you are clicking your notification bell. I thank you all so much for being here today. I know that these are projects that you can definitely do. I want to know which one you're going to try to do. And do you do thrift clips for yourself? I thank you so very much for stopping by and spending your time with me. Be sure you look in the description box now to join the cruise. And there's a little rectangle right here. Watch that one next. Bye.